Today I'm walking you through my editing process in Lightroom. It is a video where I took the time to explain everything I did and why I did them. So it is quite extensive. I'm covering the editing part and a little bit of the export setting also towards the end. If you want to get yourself very good presets, you can head over to my website and grab a pack. It is helping me and the channel a whole lot. So really appreciate you if you consider that. And the video is quite long, so let's jump right into the computer. So here's a version of that photo I edited uh, yesterday. And this is the before, this is the after. And let's reset that and start from scratch. The first thing I like to do is enable the lens corrections, uh, removing the chromatic aberration and the profile corrections. And usually what I like to do is keeping the distortion correction, but um, depending on the photo, I like to keep the vignetting. So I will uh, slide this uh, this down to, to zero. I like the organic vignetting of, uh, of the lens I'm using, but correcting the distortions give a better starting point with straighter line um, when you move on to the upright uh, to uh, correct all the lines and having a, a perfectly uh, correct perspective. Talking about perspective, this is the second step of my uh, editing process and I usually try auto and vertical and see uh, which one I like best. I think here um, I might prefer auto and when neither of them uh, actually work I would try the guided like trying to um, make the lines by myself but here I think it works well um, so I will keep uh, the auto uh, perspective. Now that my lens correction and transform have been taken care of, I like to minimize the panels to um, make it as clear and as tidy as possible. And from there, I usually crop my uh, photos. Um, here, I will keep it vertical and I will keep the original uh, three by two aspect ratio. And as for the crop, I like to put my, uh, my subject a little bit more in the center. Um, also, I oftentimes use the crop to uh, clean a little bit uh, my composition here we see we have a little shadow and if I crop a tiny bit more I can remove things without using the spot removal tool. And I think in terms of the crop we are good here. Our subject is not exactly on the bottom third but still the start of this little house is somewhere on this bottom third so, so I like how balanced is this composition now so I'm happy with that. Next step is the basic settings and as for the profile I like to uh, edit my photos in the Adobe color profile. It is a pretty neutral uh, color profile so when I create edits and presets uh, I can apply them to files from any camera so that's why I always like to use uh, any of the Adobe uh, standard profile color standard sometimes portraits but rarely the landscape and vivid one here I'm pretty happy with the white balance because I usually shoot in camera with the daylight um, default settings. Um, sometimes if I'm not very happy, I try to uh, to uh, use the default daylight from uh, Lightroom. It is quite close, so it's a little bit more green and the temperature is at 5500. It is usually a good starting point. Next and very important setting is the exposure. And here we have a very contrasty scene. So we'll have to reshape the exposure with uh, with the highlight shadows uh, settings, with the tone curves, and at a later stage, uh, the masks. Uh, and definitely here, moving the, the overall exposure is not helping that much, so I will keep it at zero because uh, it is pretty balanced, and then we'll uh, make further, more localized adjustments. And moving on to the highlights, what I like to do sometimes is holding on the shift uh, key and double click on the highlight or any of these um, of these uh, settings when you do so it gives you what would be the auto setting um, the auto adjustment for that particular setting only not for the whole basic settings and here i see that lightroom considers that minus 81 is a good spot to recover all the highlight details so i get that but i don't want to go all the way down because uh, what I don't like for my photos is uh, them to look like HDR and um, really fake. So I take that into account, minus 81, and maybe I would bump that up, maybe 30 points, somewhere like that. I think at minus uh, 45, minus 50 is quite good. We cut back some details and color in the sky, so I think it looks okay. I will do the same for the shadows. Here, you see it's uh, bringing to plus 55 and it looks terrible. And that's typically a scene, uh, as I said, it's a contrasty scene. And this is somewhere I don't want to uh, recover a lot of the shadow details. So actually, I will probably keep it 
at zero, check if I bump just slightly at 10 or 20. I think I will keep it at 10 and maybe do further localized adjustment here around um, the subject to recover a little bit of shadow details only here, but not in the foreground where I will crush everything with my uh, tone curve and especially the, the masks later. Then when it comes to the white, again, I can check plus one looks to be nice, but I will reduce that a touch to recover uh, a little bit more detail, not too much. As for the blacks, Lightroom gives me a plus five, but I will not uh, follow that because I like to use the blacks to start uh, pushing a little bit my contrast, uh, not too much in this uh, first stage. And I'm happy with those uh, settings. And now what I do that may look a bit uh, a bit funny, you may say, but I will use the contrast uh, setting and bring it down to uh, minus 50, somewhere like that, to have a very clean and neutral starting point um, because I want to use especially the tone curve to, uh, to really dial the contrast as I like and not rely on the slider, which gives you way less freedom because it's just um, a Lightroom interpretation of, uh, of uh, what plus contrast or minus contrast should be. Before starting messing with the tone curve, I like to reduce the clarity a bit. I like that it removes this digital edge, this over sharpness. I used to uh, to go quite crazy on the minus clarity, sometimes at minus 30, but recently I, I prefer to park it somewhere around minus 15. Um, I guess you can already have a little bit of a softness uh, without going overboard and, and creating something that may look cool uh, with current hype, but uh, will look terrible uh, in one or two years time. So now our basic settings are okay. So I will close the panel and start with my tone curve. First, I will go on the RGB channels and do the exact same curve for the three channels. I like to do so, uh, but being very gentle uh, making a very smooth and uh, gentle S-curve um, on all three channels to um, start creating contrast. And what I found is that when you bring a little bit of uh, S-curve in these RGB channels, yes, you have some contrast, but more so it brings a bit more depth in the, the colors, uh, which I like. Moving on to the main curve, and I like sometimes to use this uh, pin tool to uh, create points on the curve uh, somewhere for example, here, I know that I want to um, crush that down a little bit, so I can create a point here. Here, I like the level brightness of uh, what we have here, so I can create a point, and this one, maybe I will not move it, but it creates like some sort of an anchor, uh, so I can move things around it, and um, it will uh, not, uh, it will keep the same uh, brightness level, let's say. And here we can start messing around with the curve and I like to hold the option key uh, when moving my, my uh, points because you have to move your mouse a lot more to um, make adjustments. So it is easier to, uh, yeah, easier to, to adjust. Creating a point here in the mid tones to bring those a little bit uh, higher. Actually, I will move this uh, this very bright point slightly higher too. And what I like is having a little bit of a fade in the darker areas. And also in the brighter area, I like to reduce a little bit the overall um, dynamic range in a sense, because when you have these very white parts, it really cries digitals, uh, I think. So I like to reduce that a little bit. So we have a, a little bit more of a matte finish. So I will try to um, adjust a little bit further my tone curve. I don't want to push it too much because I know that I will make localized adjustment later. That's something uh, you acquire with experience, like uh, you are moving your tone curve, your basic settings, already thinking uh, about um, the the masks you will uh, you will apply later so it's important not to uh, go too far with those settings so you can still have a little bit of, uh, of freedom uh, when um, applying the mask last step is this parametric curve the one that is the most on the left and i usually use this one only to um, adjust my highlights i like to um, move this anchor point more towards the, um, towards the end and then reduce my highlight to further increase this uh, matte finish 
um, you can bring it down to minus 40 up to minus 60 i think it uh, can look quite good i'm happy with my tone curve adjustment uh, that's what we did and we can now move on to uh, the colors and i like to start with the color calibration um, the color calibration is different from the hsl it affects the red green and blue pixels and i like to move the blue a little bit towards the left um, not too much because then you have too much of a teal and orange a very cheap kind of look so around minus 10 is a, is a good place to be then if you increase the saturation of the blue i think it creates a lot more depth in the color so i like to uh, bring it up a, a touch then for my green primary depending on what i go for i may uh, do something differently but my green i like that when they look actually green and not uh, yellowish so i move my green primary to um, to the right more to this um, green aqua uh, side as for the red i will keep it in the center but i will move my saturation a touch um, plus 10 i think is a right place to be and then i will add a little bit of green in the shadows um, yeah i like the, the adjustment it makes and it's different from the color grading it's a bit more uh, refined i think so minus uh, six somewhere like that minus five is um, is nice i think we are good with the calibration and now we can start messing around with the hsl so i'll start with the hue and my philosophy with colors is that when you have uh, two maximum three uh, main colors in an image then um, it simplifies the scene and it can uh, deliver good results so i use my hue sliders to move and blend colors a bit better together like the red i like to move it a little bit to the orange um, so it blends better with the red and orange my yellows slightly to um, to the green here we see uh, there's plenty of yellow in the um, in the trees don't want to uh, go too far because then here it looks uh, very uh, very unnatural so just a bit my greens i think they look good um maybe a bit more towards the green aqua side we'll keep my aqua and blue almost untouched maybe my blue a little bit towards the left um, i don't see any purple and magenta in this um, in this photo so i will keep them untouched and now where i do uh, most of the adjustment is in the saturation um, i don't really like blues in my uh, in some of my picture like in my style you would always see quite desaturated skies um, and of course the sky desaturated i think it looks good but what we see here is that all this um, foreground in the shadow all the road is actually blue uh, so we, when we bring that down the road uh, turns gray this is uh, too much this is just for demonstration but um, here clearly i don't see any point of uh, keeping this um, the road and the foreground uh, blue so i decrease the blue saturation quite a bit around minus 35 and i make sure to adjust a little bit the aqua so it's again more blended together because sometimes you have nuances of aqua and blue and if one is very high and the other one is very low you can have some artifacts and um, uh, not smooth transitions to have darker and deeper greens i like to reduce also the saturation of the greens um, i'll check what the yellow um, i will keep a decent amount of saturation in the yellow and probably keep the red and orange untouched i think there is some chromatic aberration here that was not removed um, and it's very magenta purple um, so i will use the saturation slider of the hsl to try mitigate that i think you can go a little bit further minus 50 for both as for the luminance now that i removed some saturation in the blue i can move down the luminance a bit so we can have a little bit more contrast in the um, in the sky area without bringing too much of saturation back only playing with the luminance of that color that blue color we use the luminance of the orange a touch same for the reds 
You can also play with the luminance to create more color density. I think it's a mix of, of luminance, saturation, and the calibration that we uh, that we play with before to create a lot more um, color density. If I reduce the luminance of the purple and magenta because we had this chromatic aberration, I think it works well to to um, bring back some of these uh, some of the contrast here. So I can reduce that a touch, and I think I'm happy with the color mixer. Uh, we've reduced um, the blue, which was one of the main and the most important changes uh, with the HSL. We can move on to the color grading, but I close my panel first. When it comes to the color grading, I like to play with complementary colors. Um, if I want to incorporate some um, some blue uh, teal in the shadows or anywhere else, then I will play with something contrasty on the other side of the the color wheel uh, somewhere in the orange uh, yellow area because those are complementary colors and I think they usually work well together. For this photo I want to add a little bit of teal in the shadow. Um, I like to go quite strong first to have a visual representation and then dial down my, uh, my saturation. I find that somewhere around 5 up to 20 um, are the good place to be when it comes to the color grading um, adjustments. Um, here I think 12, 13 looked great. I want to play with the contrasty, the opposite color, but I will use the mid-tones to do so. Um, somewhere like yellow, orange, um, I think it's good and it really bring more warmth uh, from this uh, sunlight that we have here. Uh, of course 46 is uh, way too strong so maybe we can dial down around 20 something 20 yeah 20 looked good um, highlights maybe uh, contrast that with a touch of teal again but very minimal like plus five and when it comes to the global i like my photos to uh, feel a bit warmer so i use the global to uh, reshift everything to uh, towards the yellow orange area uh, not too much the global are pretty strong usually so i go not over five or ten in some scenarios i think around seven we are good and this is the effect of the color grading maybe i will adjust further my mid-tones more towards yellow um, a bit less saturation in the teal in the shadows and I think it looks quite good maybe a bit more saturation in the global adjustments so let's do a quick before and after to see what we've done so far it looks natural but it is stylized which is really the, the goal um, of, uh, of my editing process I want my photos to have a style to have a an identity without making them look uh, completely unnatural and now we can move on to the fun part which is the masks and clearly i will use the mask to reshape my uh, my exposure bring a lot more attention here to the um, to the subject removing a lot of the attention and removing exposure here in the foreground keeping the sky where it is approximately and if we look at the light we see the shadow is going from right to left so we can assume that um, the sun was coming from from the right here so we can uh, accentuate that with uh, with the masks there are plenty of ways you can play with the with the mask because now we can add we can subtract things and it is very powerful here to um, adjust my foreground i will use a linear mask and i don't mind covering um, our subject because here i can use the high feather and then subtract for example a radial gradient again with a high feather to um, really make the adjustment as natural as possible here is the affected sections and i can start removing some exposure removing some of the shadow and try to see what blacks are doing we are getting quite contrasty. I kind of like that. It may sound counterintuitive because there's not a lot of white here anyway, but reducing the white, make sure that you remove 
um, the edge, remove that, that brightness on some element of the foreground to really um, really catch the viewer's attention and redirect it to, um, to your subject. So I'm pretty happy with these adjustments. Now I'll create a radial gradient coming from the right side. As we said, the sun was, was on the right, something like this. And we can maybe just increase a touch the exposure and the white, really not too much. And we can even maybe mess around with the temperature, like bring it up maybe at plus five. And you see here my um, mask is covering also that uh, little building on the right side, which was not hit by the light. So what I can do is subtract a linear gradient, something like that. So we make sure that uh, the building is not affected. Then, yeah, I could even play further with my subject, maybe with a brush or something, increase the clarity and maybe the saturation, just a touch. And if we look at the before and after the mask, we have reshaped the light coming from here, removed a lot of the distraction and the exposure in the foreground. We kept the sky where it is, and I think it looks good. And if we do a global before and after, that's the result. Last step, it depends on what you want to go for, but I want to add a little bit of grain something not too harsh so i will bring it to plus 25 my size to 35 somewhere like that and i like this kind of setting for a more fine grain it's not too obvious but it looks it looks nice and now if i want to copy paste or create a preset out of these settings this is what i would do um, keep the profile in take away the white balance and exposure because they are very individual to each photos. Then I keep all the remaining settings, the curves, color mixer, color grading, detail. I didn't do any uh, um, detail sharpening adjustment, so I leave that out. Lens correction is also a photo to photo um, adjustment uh, because I want this to be applicable to photos taken with another camera, with another lens, so I leave that out. Transform 2 is, is very individual um, to each photo. Then effects, we had some grain, so I can keep that in sometimes. For my presets, I don't want to uh, have grain uh, in them, so I leave that out and then add grain um, if I want. Calibration, of course, I keep that in. HDR mode is something new in Lightroom. I've never edited HDR photos, but I keep it like that, I have no problem. And the masking also is a very individual photo to photo uh, setting. So I leave that out and then I can copy my settings. And now we can try to apply those settings to another photo. Uh, but when I do so, I start just like before with the lens correction um, here. I think I will not keep all the vignetting, maybe leave it somewhere at 60 check my lens correction here we have straight lines um, let's keep it the auto but here i crop a little bit because you see there is a little gap between the building and the sky so i crop just a touch so we don't have this weird uh, little gap here we are white balance looks okay if i try auto it brings a little bit more warmth which look good but yeah I will dial it down to uh, 5750 tint I think somewhere at 14 looks good the overall exposure again it's is, is looking good so I leave it there and then use maybe a localized adjustments and here I can paste my settings first thing I notice is that it's a bit too warm and my highlights are too crushed so I will move my highlights up again but what we see is that the color grading uh, was a bit too uh, strong it worked well on that previous photo but uh, not in this one so that's what you have to go through to create good uh, presets good starting points because um, not everything is working on all pictures and and good presets for me um, they are a good starting point for almost any pictures so i can dial 
my color grading a bit better. I went a bit too far, maybe in the global adjustment and in the midtones. Maybe a bit too orange, so I will move that back towards yellow. I think now it looks good, so maybe it's more like the overall temperature that was too warm. Boost the exposure a touch. So now I can move on to the mask and I will use a brush to reduce a bit the exposure on this fence here. Very simple, just the exposure setting. And I show you something with the again with the brush. If you have a very small brush like this, you can create one point at a corner, for example. Then you make your brush very large and you go to the other corner of the frame and you maintain the shift key and click again and you see it creates this cone shaped uh, yeah adjustment uh, going from that first that first little point to that big point actually you can do the same just to create a straight line here and not without changing the size uh, when you you when you maintain shift and you click new points you can make those adjustments and have very straight lines but as uh, we've seen, you can also um, adjust the size in between and it will create these uh, cone things. I think it's very powerful to accentuate a source of light. Um, here, I will slightly increase the exposure and maybe the whites, maybe decrease a touch the clarity. I think it looks good. And now I can right click here and duplicate and invert the mask. Uh, so I have the opposite selection. I don't want this to be applied to uh, the sky. So what I can do here, subtract the sky. And I can crush this further to really reshape the light, really create a lot of contrast. See if we do, if we do a before and after the masks, we have something that looks very cool. And here, here I just noticed that um, this first mask is completely spilling on the on the fence and clearly it doesn't look good so what I can do is subtract um, a brush for example and paint that away so we don't have this weird line anymore and now we have pretty decent results here I can just use the correction tool to make my photo a bit cleaner. Yeah, I don't really like this white thing. Maybe I can try to remove that. If we do this, for a very difficult thing, of course, Photoshop will work better, but here we have very good results. So whenever I can um, do the correction without uh, switching uh, software, uh, I like it can further clean like these little things like that maybe here. here you can always clean further but here we have removed a few of the distractions I think it looks better now here again tack and yeah let's do a before and after pretty happy with the results and now that we've fine-tuned a little bit our adjustment I can copy again and apply that to another picture same process yeah here I will keep the, the vignetting correction auto works well I'll crop it to remove the little gap here just like that paste my settings it's a bit too dark so I can move my exposure up I don't want my sky to be brighter so I keep it like that and then I can select the sky, invert the selection and move the exposure and the whites a touch, maybe also the shadows, but to keep a decent amount of contrast I move the contrast up, it looks great like this. I can always play with maybe a radial gradient, make my source of light a bit stronger. I know that the sun is coming from the left. We have the we have the shadow uh, going from left to right. So I can just boost the exposure a touch like that. Make it a bit more directional. Let's do a before and after. 
looks good. Now if I want to export these photos, um, I don't do anything crazy actually. Keep my format to JPEG, quality, quality to 100. I don't do any resize to fit. Um, sharpen, I sharpen for screen standard. I think that's the default option in, um, in Lightroom. And that's pretty much it. Even if I were to post any of this on Instagram, the landscape rotation, I would keep uh, this crop. But for the vertical one, I would crop to four by five, which is the which is the format for Instagram, four by five. Then when exporting, again, I don't touch any of these. Quality to the maximum, sharpening, uh, standard. I don't do uh, any image resizing. I think it works well. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you could get a lot of value out of this video. Uh, there will be a link in the description to download the preset I created throughout this session. It's totally free and you can have a taste of how my other presets look like. And yeah, let's catch up in the next one. Bye.